Hello my beautiful MK Love fam and welcome back to another episode and if this is your first time watching and you have no idea who the heck I am my name is Melanie K Love I make videos every Monday and Thursday teaching you how to learn to love yourself flaws and all trust your intuition and to manifest your heart's true desires now Speaking of trusting your intuition, this is what this whole video is based around. These are my 11 signs that I have been through so far along my spiritual awakening. Now, I thought that I was already someone who is already spiritually awake, awoken, awaken, awaken. Um, except on the weekend, something happened to me. It really threw me off guard and I was like, what the heck? Why is this happening to me? I didn't understand it. I got so confused and... I'll speak more about that in number 11 because I'll leave that one to the last and it really made me go okay I'm not going crazy I'm literally not going crazy and if I'm feeling like this then I'm sure there's a lot of you that are going through this or maybe you've noticed some of them or maybe you've been through all of them or maybe you have more to tell me about in the comment section at the end of the video so I just wanted to share with you what I have been through how I got to where I am today and it's pretty amazing, but okay. So the first one is I started noticing synchronicities. I started noticing this around 2006 when I got a calling that I I had to move to the UK. <laughs> I just had finished my um, degree as a primary school teacher and a company from the UK came to visit and they're basically trying to recruit teachers to teach in the UK. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then kind of let it slip I moved to a different um, city and then I checked my junk mail one day don't ask me why I did but for some reason that day I felt like I needed to I checked my junk mail there was an email from the exact same company and they say come tomorrow we have an event um, you know just to tell you more about this offer anyways I went and at the end of it I got in the car I called my mom and I was like mom I'm moving to the UK and I'm breaking up with such and such she's like holy flipping heck and I'm like by the way I'm moving home for four months so I can save and then I'll be gone and that basically was this first massive synchronicity before that I actually had a um actually no I will talk about more of that it's kind of difficult because I would say that like your intuition basically stems through all of these like your intuition basically deepens through all of these 11 signs so like I had a sign from my intuition to say two years into my relationship with my ex-boyfriend that I needed to move to the UK and he's like okay go not like oh don't leave me or he was just like just go and I was like that's not really what you're meant to say and so I kind of like oh I'll change him he'll come he'll come fast forward another two years later and then I got this email and I was like dude you need to act on it the moment I acted on it and I know a lot of you can relate because you've been telling me that some of you have just booked travel recently which is amazing and I <laughs> so I booked that ticket I had never even been to the UK. I had never even left Queensland, like the state of Queensland in Australia, let alone travel internationally, let alone by myself. That was a really big deal. Anyways, I get to the UK and the universe lines up this fabulous house full of five Canadian primary school teachers or and high school teachers. And we're all living together in North London. And it was just like a match made in heaven. Like these people became my bestest friends and we were, honestly like a family like a, a massive oh it was just a, a deep connection and it was just so beautiful in every possible way and along my journey there was so many other synchronicities like over time I would have um, when it got time for me to move back to Australia I got a synchronicity of um, I had a little face scrub circle thing that went into a clear pot just yeah it was like a scrubber brush that you put into a little pot so it's little things that you can get from Lush and I used to like exfoliate my face and then one day there was like cond condensation in it and then when I went to pull my little scrubber brush out no joke there was a picture of the world map of Australia and I was like okay it's time for me to go home because I was trying so hard to get sponsored to stay in the country and it wasn't working there was all these flags and then my sister was like I'm getting married I was like shit no I have to come home and 
Yeah, so there was just so many other things. It's developed quite a lot. It has gone through um, numbers. I used to see the number 32 everywhere. It used to actually freak me out until I went to see a psychic and I was like, why is this happening? And she's like, okay, darling, add three and two together. That's five. Five is massive transformation. And so I started seeing numbers. I now just only see angel numbers. And I know a lot of you do because you send me all of these messages on Instagram like, no, this number plate, this happened, this happened, this happened. And music comes on. I see feathers. I see coins. There's just a lot of synchronicities that happen. So that's only number one. So number two is as you start your awakening, you begin to question everything. I questioned my career as a primary school teacher and I was like, what am I doing? I have no freedom. Yes, I'm making a difference in the lives of these kids and I'm molding them to be beautiful people. And I, I remember my last class that I taught, there was year three in Hackney. And I said to those kids, if someone tells you you can't do it, what should you do? and they say prove them wrong and I, that's what I molded into their beautiful heads when I used to teach there which was like over seven years ago now um, yeah so question everything that turned into not only Korea it turned into what I ate and that's when I became vegan I actually became raw vegan because I had um, as I was um, learning to heal myself. I had acne that came out as a result of my detoxification. I thought I just had acne but then when I went back to think about the chain of events that basically what happened, I basically went from um, a slow transition from cutting out preservatives to then becoming vegetarian, to becoming pescatarian, becoming high raw vegan, to becoming um, a whole foods vegan and oh, there was just a lot that happened but I really noticed as soon as I stopped um, eating things that had caused pain like when you think about when an animal was killed it release releases a hormone into its body and when you eat that meat you take that energy on yourself and I just felt like mental clarity as I began to eat more high vibrational food to this day, I've never felt more amazing. My, it changed the color of my eyes. I lost, um, I'm not gonna say how much I lost. My body just found its natural weight. Um, there was just so much involved in that one. That one was really, really amazing. I really woke, uh, I got to a point where I was questioning what's truly important. You know, what's important? Love. You know, you can't buy love. Um, what's really important? Time. You can't buy time. Well, you can trade time for money and that's where I'm phasing out of because that doesn't sit well with me. So yeah, that's number two is I began to question everything. Everything from like, even like watching TV. It's like, why are we watching this? This is not good for my soul. This is not good for my vibration. Why am I... I I'll talk about the next one. <laughs> number three is the, your perception of the world changes. This came about as you begin to question everything and I learned that everything I was taught was basically a lie. And it was like, you need to eat um, animals for protein, which I found out was the biggest load of shit. And you get, there's protein, there's 10% protein in every single fruit and vegetable, um, legume, nuts and seeds and all of that. And I was like, what? Why is it like, oh, protein this and have this protein shake? And I was, that really, really, really struck a chord with me. And I was like, okay, well, if that is wrong. What else is wrong? And then when I learned about how animals were killed, I was like, oh my flipping God. And it made me quite angry, actually, as I was going through this because I was so mad that I just accepted everything. And I was like, why is everyone carrying on that this is normal and this is okay? It actually quite upset me. And I upset a lot of people because I became very vocal. I'd be like, you shouldn't eat animals. You shouldn't do this. You're killing animals. I can't eat with you. And I got really vocal. And then I realized well, you can't change people that do not want to be changed. You have to be the change you want to see in the world. So yeah, I became really, really angry as all of my perception of the world started changing and I started seeing through other people's bullshit, which then stems on to the next one. Number four is that I didn't fit in with my current way of life because I started seeing things from a complete different perspective. Like think of it as like the hanged man card from Tarot, you know, where he's like upside down in a tree. And it's like my perception changed and the friends that I had, I was like, I have nothing in common with you because I do not agree with what you're doing and I don't want to be around that toxic energy anymore. I had a lot of difficulties with my family. I still am working through that because there's still 
do not understand who I am. Um, they take little bits of it and like, oh yeah, that's just Mel, you know. I was like, uh -huh, okay, little do you know, I can see through your shit. Um, so yeah, I didn't fit in anymore, so my, my job changed. I found, I went through so many different jobs. Um, I just didn't fit in with these people that were low vibrational. And I was like, this is so hard, I have to dumb myself down to chat with you. I don't want to dumb myself down. That's like saying, I'm going to dim my light to to go on to your level and that really didn't sit well with me um, and as a result of that I started having a smaller friendship group um, but yeah then you I'll talk more about finding your soul tribe later so yeah it didn't fit in um, then number five I became on a quest to seek love and a deeper meaning for life I'm like what is life what who what why am I on this planet what is my purpose um, and in the process of all of that happening, this is when I learned how to love myself, like truly love myself. Food was like my first form of self-love and it was the spiritual awakening that really fast-tracked things for me. Um, and that's when I started to like unify my body, my mind and my soul and that, that trio connection became solidified. And that's when I really started, that's when I transitioned my YouTube channel from speaking about how to become vegan, where I formerly was known as Raw Nourishment. That was two years of my YouTube channel was called that. And then when I said, you know, guys, that's done. And I made that video where I was literally sobbing outside on the floor and to transitioning over to, I'm Melanie Kate Love, because I'm like, I am more than food. Food is one aspect of who I am. And yeah, so that's when I began learning to love myself and that's when I truly embraced releasing my blockages and I was like, okay, if there's pain and discomfort, thank you, thank you, thank you, what do I need to know? And then um, I had this undeniable desire <clears throat> to change the world and I was like, the way that I'm going to do that is that I can't work for other people. I just butt heads and the universe has made it very clear. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> a number of times that I'm not meant to work for other people long term and I'm in this transition now where I want to work for myself full time and so that's when I started my business um, MelanieCakeLove.com and it's just been a dream to be able to treat people the way I want to be treated and to be able to be like very attuned to their emotions and work out what are their love languages and how you work with them. Anyway, so that's when I started Melanie Kate Love. The other thing that came when I was seeking deeper meaning in life was I began to simplify my life. I started cutting out things that didn't serve my highest good. <laughs> and that's when I read the book, The KonMari Method, which I have a whole series about and in the book, my intention was to become a minimalist. I wanted to see what it was like to live with less, but experience more. And I applied these KonMari principles to every area of my life. And it was the most liberating thing. And I literally, if I was to pack a suitcase and move to Ireland with Peter, I know that I could fit everything that was dearly important to me in a suitcase with 23 kilos. And I'm so excited to do that because I know that it's coming. I'm pretty sure it may be coming next year. Um, yeah, and then the other one to seek deeper meaning was finding my soul tribe, which I refer to you guys as my beautiful MK Love fan. I feel such a deep connection to you guys. And I think about you all the time, actually. And it just fills my heart with so much love, knowing that we are building this beautiful... I get emotional talking about you, actually because I don't think you guys realize how much you mean to me. Like, I get private messages all the time and I just say to people, you don't understand how much this means to me. Like, this means more to me than you ever understand. And I'm so grateful for you guys because without you, I would feel like I'm going crazy. And I feel, I feel fulfilled and I feel a sense of purpose when I work with you guys and I read the comments and I do private readings for you and as I'm preparing to coach you guys in my eight-week program I feel so connected to it and it's like you know what 
it's what I would do regardless if I had a million dollars in the bank. It's what fulfills me and it is what I was born onto this planet to do. And I can always get emotional, especially when I, when I, like, I just want to meet you guys. Like, I'm visualizing, visualizing having retreats all around the world where I just pop up. I'm like, hey guys, I'm in here. I just want, like, 11 of you together. We're going to book a beautiful Airbnb um, and just have dance parties and white sage the whole house and release blockages and just cry together and, and drink tea together and do everything that makes us feel fulfilled and I already know how the start of the treats gonna retreats gonna look like I literally know the first activity that I'm doing with you and it's gonna be quite like whoo anyways so yes I'm on a research for deeper meaning and you guys play a massive massive role in that so thank you so much I don't even think I have waterproof mascara on good lord Okay, number six is that I'm highly sensitive. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I see this as a gift. I know there's a lot of people that think that it's actually a hindrance. It's a gift that I have learned to embrace. As an empath, I'm highly sensitive to the emotions of the people around me. Um, I can feel your emotions from just replying to you in comments. And I've had to really up my self-love practices, especially before readings. And... Well, especially when I know that I'm going in toxic situations. Um, but yeah, being an empath is really beautiful, but you can get so drained. I remember when I first started reading, the first client I ever read for, I read for her in the morning and I spent the whole afternoon on the couch. I was like, holy heck. I was reading from someone who was going through depression and was suicidal and I was like, that's not my ideal client. I don't want to be that drained. I want people that have already started working on themselves and they want accelerated help to take them to the next level. Um, Cause I found that really difficult. So I started protecting my energy. Um, I went through periods of depression. I think I've been through depression twice. Um, I actually have made a video about it showing how raw that can be. It was maybe like two years ago. Um, but depression was something that I wasn't, hadn't been around before. And I found it very difficult adjusting to my new abilities. Um, I just didn't know how to handle it, to be honest. Um, my intuition I've got here, but my intuition is so has developed to be so powerful now that I just know things without having any explanation why I know something. Like sometimes I'm reading from a private client, I pull a card and I was like, oh my God, you have beautiful brown curly hair and I just see you laughing your head off and you're with you like your friends like at the beach and she's she sent me a picture back and she's like, Mel, this is me. I was like, holy heck. Like just knowing things is just crazy. Especially, I don't know if I've spoken about this. Oh no, I'll talk more about that later in the next one. Okay, so yeah, I have developed um, a deep connection with my angels. I'm clairvoyant, clairsentient, and clairaudient. So that means I can feel your emotions. That's sentient. Um, I can, that's when I get a lot of pains in my chest or different chakras where I can feel blockages. Clairaudient, because my angels can talk to me. Like I can literally hear words or I'll hear songs. That's why I channel a lot of songs. Um, and clairvoyant is with visions. I hear a lot, I'm more, oh, I'm kind of a mixture of all three, but lately, clairaudient is the one that I have the most. I just hear lots and lots of songs. Um, and I also, being a highly sensitive person, I find it very difficult to be in crowds. I find it very difficult to live in cities. I am living in suburbia here, and I find it hard. Um, I find that I just want to be out in nature and I don't want to have neighbors and I just want to just have beautiful, um, a beautiful creek running behind me with like a tree house of some sort or a shipping container and like living off the land. Like that to me is like my happy place and Peter and I are working super hard to get to that and I know I'm going to get it. Like I know. And I remember when I first met Peter, I said to him like, I want to live in a shipping container house. Are you, is that something that's in alignment with you? So, oh my God, yes. I was like, oh my God, where have you been in my life? Um, number seven is finding refuge in nature. So that is like where it's like pollutant free. It's like taking on the vibration of mother nature, which is already high vibrational energy. You 
when you're in nature you can't be mad you can't be cranky you just feel like at peace and I just find it so beautiful watching the animals and like seeing them communicate with you in funny ways you're like oh I know what you're trying to tell me um, I just feel happier and it, it that is my happy place in nature I thought it was by the beach but I like swimming in the ocean, I don't necessarily like living by the ocean. Like if I could live in a rainforest but then have a beach not far, I would do that. And I think Hawaii is kind of like a good mixture of those two. Okay, the other one, number eight, is I understand contrast. I understand why people are cranky. I understand why people project their bullshit on me. I was like, okay, this is not a reflection of me. I'm just a mirror to you of the unhealed wounds. And that's something that I've learned within the last year, is understanding a lot to do with contrast. Um, I remember Abraham Hicks has a saying in her Morning Mindset audio, and she was like, I understand contrast. Um, I'm good within contrast because I understand it. It can be hurtful, um, especially if it's family. I find that really hurtful, but it's like, I understand this is not about me. This is about you. Um, number nine is communication with spirits. I'm actually a medium as well. I saw my first spirit, which she was friggin' scary, let me tell you. It was not a good experience. When I was probably like 2005, and I shut it off, I was so scared. And she was so awful. She looked like a, the, the girl from The Ring. I saw her at the end of the, the hallway one night when I turned the light off, I was like, ah! And I ran in my room, put the blanket on, and she was over my head. She's like, <gasps> no, she's like, <sighs> I was like, this is not real, this is not real, go away, go away. And then the next one time I um, had a communication with the spirit, he was so beautiful. His name was Brian, and he was, he hadn't crossed over from, uh, since 1962 and so this this um, happened in 2000 it's 11 11 on my clock as I just said that um, this happened in 2015 when I helped him cross over and I had to speak to another medium to help me to make sure that I was okay um, because I didn't realize that you could talk to spirits in your head like I thought you had to speak out loud no, no, no. So the way that he used to get my attention was walking on um, dead leaves outside my window and he would crunch up and down. It would always happen around three o'clock. I was like, why is this happening? And then what else did he do? He would wear thongs, walk up and down. He would go upstairs and open the balcony upstairs and like, like, like the scene from, um, what is making that noise? Oh, my thing. Um, like what Jim Carrey does, he's like, oh, when he's clo closing the door and he'd open it, he's like, it's soundproof. Oh. It was like he kept doing that, but no one else could hear it except me. Then I would hear like, um, like a, like a truck, like, doo, doo. I later found out that he was a truck driver. I basically helped him cross over, which I've never done before. He used to scare me so much and I, I had to learn that I'm in control and that I need to dictate how this relationship's going to work. But I haven't had any communications with spirits crossing over or I, I feel them, I don't see them anymore. Um, but yeah, that was crazy, that was really crazy. Everyone in my house thought I was crazy. And that's when Peter and I first got together and he was not um, open to that. He was open to it but he was more scared but now he sees them himself. Um, which is amazing and yeah that that was really powerful I was like oh my god like there are people around me just watching me and I feel angels all the time my dog Jessie who passed like three years ago she visits all the time I've spoken about that she tends to fart she now shows up as a blue butterfly and whenever I see blue butterflies no matter where it is I'm like Jessie's here um yeah my little Jessie um yeah and also um, yeah, okay, that's all I'm going to say about that one. Yeah, so I'm also a medium. I have channeled, um, spoken to spirits before, which I think is really beautiful. I've, like, watched every episode of, like, Hollywood Medium. I'm like, ooh, that's just a beautiful, beautiful gift. Anyways, number 10 is the desire to work with the seasons, the, um, phases of the moon and astrology. And this is something that, you know, kind of happened randomly. I think, like, two years ago or maybe two and a half years ago on my YouTube channel when I was raw nourishment then, I just started doing a video, like doing reading 
and I just felt the desire to do it. I didn't know what I was doing, but my abilities have like, um, have progressed like quite quickly accelerated and I just feel really confident with it. I started with, um, the Angel Oracle Tarot, which I sent to one of you, beautiful MK Love fam, um, in the Netherlands, I think, I'm not too sure. And, um, then I moved on to Tarot and Tarot just, I love Tarot. I feel like Tarot gives you the full picture. Um, and you can tell by pulling one card where someone is on their journey. I just love that. Love that. I love working with the the um, the, the phases of the moon. I feel like it helps me be more in tune and more like accountable. Like, okay, right now as I'm filming, we're in the reset, the refining stage of the moon. And I love that. I'm like, okay, I need to totally plan out everything I need to do. And astrology is amazing. Astrology has helped me so much to understand who I am when I was born. Like the time of date, like, I don't know if you guys have researched your birth chart calculator. It's really helped me identify who I am based on my sun sign, uh, sun sign, moon, um, ascendant sign. And I just am so interested by astrology. I don't know how to read the charts, but I'm so intrigued about it. And the next one, are you ready for it? Number 11 is a massive spiritual awakening I went through last week, which was about massive headaches in my third eye chakra. Now, I noticed I had this from like Tuesday afternoon all the way through to Thursday morning. And this chakra was like someone had like pushed on it so hard. And I was like, oh my gosh, something's wrong. And I just kind of left. I'm like, oh, it'll go away. You know, I'm going through like a change of, um, se like, um, went to eclipse season, so maybe I'm highly sensitive. And then the next day I went out into mother nature like all day and it didn't go away. And I was like, this is not a migraine because I've never had a migraine before, but it felt like it from what I've heard from other people. And then, um, oh, what else was it? I started journaling. I did like 10 pages of journaling and it didn't go away. I'm like, this stuff always works. This is not right. And then I still had it. And then I still had it. And I was like, okay, this must be a different level of spiritual awakening. I realized that there's different levels to spiritual awakening. And that's my most recent one that I've been at. And I've, from what I have read, it, some people say that it could be like your angels pressing to um, fully open your third eye. I thought my third eye was open, but I'm like, there must be a different level to it, which was really um, scary at the time. So I just wanted to let you know that no, no matter what you're going through on your spiritual awakening, you know, you're not going crazy. The people around you may not understand because they're not on this spiritual path. So join a meetup group, find someone that could totally like help you out that could, um, you know, make you feel like you're not going crazy. Um, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below, like how, like, where are you on your spiritual awakening? What stage are you at? Do you relate to any of these numbers of what I've spoken about? Is there something else that I've missed that you would love to tell me about? Because I would love to hear from you. And I really hope this helps you on your journey to keep you either aware or to make you um, feel like, you know, you're not going crazy and that everything you're going through is divinely orchestrated. Don't shy back from these gifts because I did and it, it wasn't good. And it's a beautiful gift that needs to be embraced. And the world needs you to shine this beautiful beacon of light to help others heal and to help others grow. So I really hope this helps you on your journey. And yeah, comment below and let me know where are you at on your journey? Like, what are you experiencing? Um, or what have you experienced? Because I'm sure it's going to help other people out. And if there's more people going, I've been through this and I've been through that, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, this is cool. We're all going um, through this beautiful spiritual journey together. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me. If you loved this episode, please hit the, the thumbs up button because that would be absolutely amazing. And subscribe to the MK Love fam so you never miss another episode. And turn on that little bell. Um, that totally gets you not notified from YouTube. Otherwise, you're never going to know when I post a video these days. So, yeah. 
Thank you so much for watching, my loves. I will see you on Monday for another weekly angel guidance. I'm so excited to hear what's happening. I hope you're working super duper hard on your um, intentions and you've planned everything out and you're ready for tomorrow, which will be Friday, when you start to take inspired action and allow it to flow with ease because that's the face of the moon that we're at right now. All right, my love. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I'll see you on Monday. Goodbye.